Good morning, everybody, and a big welcome to Google Digital Garage this morning. Uh, I hope you've had a good few days if you've had a bit of time off. Uh, we certainly have in the UK, so I hope you've had a nice, refreshing uh, few days just to recharge those batteries. Absolute pleasure to be here this morning with you for our digital marketing strategy. Okay, so let's um, get ourselves introduced so that we uh, so that we can get to know each other a little bit. I can see that everybody has been getting involved in the chat and saying hello to our moderator Emma, who I'll introduce in a moment. So that's really great. We do love some interactive. Um, we love really interactive sessions, actually. Uh, it's great to know where people are, how people are getting on uh, within the topic that we're talking about. So please do uh, continue to share your comments uh, and come in and say hello. And uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. So my name is Glenn. Um, I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. So I'm an experienced digital skills trainer. Um, and I've got quite a background in consultancy and management and really helping businesses to identify opportunities to grow. So digital marketing strategy is right up my street, as you might say, uh, because there are so many opportunities from being online, which we're going to be covering in some detail. I would advise you to get yourself a pen and paper and also just to be aware that this session will remain live on the link that you came in on for the next 24 hours. So plenty of time to help you to go back if there are any sections you'd like to go over again. Okay, now, as I mentioned, um, we do have the wonderful Emma in the chat function. Hopefully you can see the chat function. That'll either be to the right or below your screen, depending on what device it is that you're using. Now, it's always great to work with Emma because she is a really experienced digital garage coach um, and ultimately she's a font of knowledge. So please do make good use of Emma during this session this morning. Um, really great to be able to answer your questions. Um, based on questions as well, we will have a couple of pauses for questions throughout the session. So please do, um, as we work through anything that you'd like to know more about, um, we'll try and answer as many as we possibly can for you on that basis as well. So we'll be interacting and we'll be interacting with you throughout, um, answering your questions. And as I say, just make good use of her excellent um, digital marketing knowledge because she has a lot of it. So before we do get going, let's just make sure everything's working well. If you're having any difficulties with sound or with uh, vision in terms of the picture that you can see on your screen, then perhaps just refresh your browser. So go up and refresh that. It's the age old, age old adage that if it's uh, not working, close it down and start it up again. And that should fix things for you and make things uh, exactly as you need them to be to get the most out of the session. If you don't have, I've been talking about the moderator in the chat, Emma in the chat, you'll see her with a little blue spanner by her name. If you can't see the chat function at all, then sign into your YouTube account or even create a YouTube account if you don't have one. That will give you lots of advantages once you've got a YouTube account. You can go back and you can look at your history. You can pick up on um, things that you've been watching that perhaps you've had to stop halfway through. So yeah, get yourself a YouTube account. Really, really, really handy. Take it from someone who uses YouTube a great deal that has some really good functionality. So, okay, we're running this Google Digital Garage uh, webinar um, as part of a much broader offering of webinars, sessions, and training, which are available on the Google Digital Garage site. So if you go to g.co forward slash um, Digital Garage, I have to think there for a second. So g.co forward slash digital garage, fantastic site full of learning for you, all no cost. And um, if you sign up for any of the webinars, you can book them probably exactly as you did with this one and get yourself a nice schedule going. Again, those webinar sessions will remain live for 24 hours after broadcast. There are some really good courses. A really good course that does complement this session is the Fundamentals of Digital Marketing, which again, you will be able to find on the site. And I'm sure Emma won't mind just uh, sharing the link for that as well. That's a 40 hour video learning course really up to date content and material on there to help you get the most out of really establishing a good knowledge on digital marketing, understanding how to build a brand, how to move yourself forward, you and your business forward, and how to get the most out of being online. And as I mentioned as well, though, we are going to be covering that um, shortly. So we'll get on to that. That is the housekeeping done. So welcome along, everybody. Hope you're all comfortable. Hope you've all got um, a nice suitable uh, cup of tea or cup of coffee or a cold drink. 
and we will get going. So let's have a look at what we're going to be covering for you this morning um, on this session. So we're going to start um, by looking at how we can understand digital marketing, make sure we're all on the same page, uh, understand the, the real important concepts, look at the digital world, what the online world means for business, really, really important. Then we're going to be looking at the main channels, the channels to help you to be seen, to be visible, to expand your reach online and to get you some momentum to really help to move you and your business forward. And then the section, the last section of this webinar session today is going to be about building a digital marketing plan, um, a plan for all of your digital activity and very, very importantly, of course, how to measure it effectively so that you can get the most ongoing. You can look at campaigns, you can get yourself set up so that you're always working on a positive incline of momentum, success um, and growth. Now, before we do move into the session, there's one service. If you're based in the UK and you are a small business or a charity, then you can sign up for some one-to-one -one mentoring. Now, um, that's g.co forward slash UK mentoring. This is a fantastic initiative. It complements the learning we've got on the website. It complements the webinars that we're delivering like this one now, this live session on um, YouTube today. So if you've got a particular question, and there may well be one or two or three that come up from watching this session today, and you think, how can I actually use that specifically for my business? How would my business benefit? Then perhaps signing up for one of these sessions is the best answer for you. So please do that. Sign up, talk to someone, you'll get a session for an hour, um, backwards and forwards. But again, it's bespoke tailored um, advice because it's you talking to somebody specifically about your business. So make the most of that and uh, please do sign up. Okay, let's get into the content. Let's have a look now. And let's introduce digital marketing. Let's have a look and um, find the first question. The first question is a question for you. Again, one for you to drop into the chat. And that's going to be what opportunities might you get from being online? We'd love to know what you think the advantages are, the opportunities are um, for being online. You know, it's a changing world. Technology is growing um, exponentially, hugely. You know, the curve is almost vertical in terms of growth and developments in the tech world. So what opportunities are you going to get as a business, as a small business, as a medium sized business, as a large business? What's in it for you? What's a, a few opportunities that you might have from being online? Pop them in the chat and Emma might better pop a few through for the for me to read out as well as we go. I'm a little bit ahead of you in time, so um, I'll pick up on those as we go. Now, we live in a mobile world. This is important because mobile um, mobile devices, our smartphones, those are our devices of choice now, our devices of convenience as well. So mobile in particular is changing how we act and behave as humans. We've never had the opportunity, uh, as we do now, to be more connected to information, knowledge and people. You know, those search engines will tell you anything you need to know. We can answer all of the questions that we have pretty much um, at our fingertips and we can do our own product research online, which is really, really important. So when you look at those stats online there, in the UK, 80% of people are buying online. 80%, that's eight out of 10 people, are gonna be buying online. Two and a half billion smartphones in use today. That's a considerable amount of smartphones. Imagine piling those up past the moon, I'm sure. Um, and across the world, 60% of searches are done on mobile devices. That's a lot of searches. Again, think about what you do with your phone, your smartphone, it's in your pocket. It's everywhere that you go. It's, you know, got pretty much your life on it. Keep it secure. Use those passcodes. Keep yourself safe and secure. Um, but the information on that device is huge. Okay, I've got some responses coming in. So, hey, Cash, global access is an opportunity you get from being online. Absolutely is. Um, LD, being recognized and having new connections. Exactly, having new connections, making the most of this connection ability, linking up with other people, linking up with other businesses, and getting yourself seen and visible. Some fantastic answers there. Thank you. Keep them coming, and I'll keep checking as we go. And again, this global access. So here we go, reach more people globally. Exactly that. You have the opportunity to do that. You can expand your customer base. People from all over the world can find you online. Um, now, if you're a small business or a local business, of course, then you might not want to be found globally. We might not need to be found globally. I suppose all um, 
general um, ability to be found is a good thing. You know, people, word of mouth, that sort of thing. But think about local businesses too. They might well not need the global um, expansiveness, but they can also benefit very much from people in the locality understanding that they're there and that they're ready to go and that they're answering and being the solution to the questions you might be having as a searcher. So you, you can be found by more potential customers. Now, you can also research your competitors and you've got to think about that too a really good thing we'll be covering that a little bit more um later on but yeah think about the reach that you can have and how if you're even a business that just has people walking through the door so a footfall business that your ability to get yourself online is possibly going to bring a lot more people walking through that door now one way that you can start to understand your customers and your customers are key your audience is key is to look about look at things called insights or analytics these will help you to really hone your approach and really help you to master being online as you get used to the peaks and troughs and what people like and appealing to your customers so you've got google analytics on the left there fantastic platform can help you understand your customer base are they male are they female what age ranges predominantly are they um, and on the right there you've got facebook um, analytics which again can show you some really important information about your audience help you understand when people are online what they're doing and when they're interacting with you this can make your marketing material more relevant and consistent as you start to learn about your customers now, being online, another fantastic opportunity is to be able to communicate and support better. You know, these are social platforms. So you can see from the examples on the screen, there are a number of ways that we can communicate and relate with, interact with our customers and our audience. You've got Ermintru talking about chocolate and at Cocoa Chocolate really promoting that product there you've got scott allen on the bottom left who's got a query about his pizza so now if your pizza is not turning up on time you do have the ability to go onto social media because all of these types of organizations have a social media account and say what's going on um, and that brings up and really does elevate your customer service and your customer service abilities always good to keep your customers happy as well as long as you know they're there but keep them happy too really really crucial and then you've got body transformation personal training there again you can see people being able to sell their services sell the benefits of interacting with them and again one of the things that you'll see all the way through this presentation is that you want to be the answer to your audience's questions you know we have search queries we want to be there we want to be answering those questions for the people looking for our products and for our services okay so we've looked at the opportunities um the the, the benefits the the really um, high ranking areas that really want us to think strongly about being online so we're going to move into our first pause for questions I'll just have a check to see if anything's come through it's quite early on in the presentation um, I can't see any questions come through at the moment so no problem at all there uh, again I'm sure Emma's doing a sterling job in the chat for you on those and uh, she can pass any through as we move through so I'm going to continue. There's a lot of information to cover. So let's have a look at that in some detail. And let's have a look at some really important information now based on our digital marketing channels. You know, we, we've looked at some of the benefits now of digital marketing for a business. Let's look at the channels that we can explore before we put together our plan. Remember that in part three of this, we're going to be working towards building a digital marketing plan. So a key element for us to consider is what channels are we going to be on? Now, as the digital age picks up speed, as I've said to you before, you know, it's changing, it's growing, it's evolving all the time to the advantage of the consumer. New channels are becoming available. It's important that we get to grips with the most established ones, though, the ones that potentially might help us out um, in the short, medium and long term. So let's have a look at some of those now. We'll run through these. We're going to run through each of these in a little bit more detail. So I'll just give you a top level overview of what you can see on screen. So you've got search engine optimization or SEO as it's most often referred to. So that optimizes your website, so you show up in search engine results. Someone puts in a query, you're gonna be there, you're gonna be ready to answer their questions. You got search engine marketing, which is the paid um, sort of version of advertising to appear in search engines. So you often will find yourself, or you always will find yourself, um, if you have the right bid, on the first page uh, of 
your relevant search engine. Again, a great way to become prominent for your customers. You've got social media marketing, using social networks. So your Facebooks, your Twitters, your Instagrams, your whatever, TikToks, that one's growing quite a lot too. Um, so using social networks to gain traffic attention and to reach new people to get new audiences, that's important. You've got display marketing, using online advertising techniques um, where you can advertise in many formats across the internet. You've got email marketing, something that, again, if you've got an email account and you most, I'm sure most of us on this session actually do have an email account. Even if we've logged into YouTube and we can see the chat, that means we've got an email account somewhere. Um, and so therefore we've probably been contacted or had promotional messages come through as email marketing, a great way to communicate with your customers and to really direct attention towards you, your services and your products. And then we've got content marketing. So that's creating and sharing different types of content. You've got blog posts, you know, that really good, interesting reading. You've got videos, such a popular way to do things. Um, you've got guides, infographics. All of these things are there to entertain, inform, and potentially educate the audience. So let's run through these and let's have a look at how all of these work. And again, just think about as we're uh, running through these, which might be good for your business and think about why. Think about your customers, think about what they like, think about what might appeal to them. So let's have a look at search marketing uh, initially. This is about using the power of search to reach new customers. Um, you can see uh, you probably are aware or have come across this type of screen, maybe more than once as well. This is called a search engine results page, and it does contain mainly three things on it. You can see that we've got a box in yellow, a box, a box in blue, and a box in green. So let's cover what they are. Search query, so that's your keywords. That's the thing that's typed in. The query on the screen is the best compact camera for travel. So a good, that would be called, um, a long tail keyword. It's quite specific. I want a good compact camera for travel. Tells you a lot. So that's your search query. Now underneath that, you do have the paid text and the shopping ads. So these are organizations, companies, businesses that have paid for the privilege of being at the top of the search engine results page based on the ad bids that they've made. Uh, and you can see a number of varieties of uh, cameras and camera shops there, all vying for your attention. And then underneath that, you've got the organic search as well. Organic search means that you've got a website. It means that you have bought a domain, you've uploaded it, it's active. Google and other search engines are now sending the spiders in to have a look around your website. They're indexing it, it's ready to be found. Um, that is the SEO. Um, area that we were talking about before, organic search listings. So how do we get started? I mean, it's a big topic, but how do we get started with search engine optimization? Um, okay, there's a quite a few ways and quite a few things that you can do. So let's have a look first. Sign up for Search Console. For, uh, search Console is a fantastic free tool that's going to help you understand better how you rank on Google and if there are any issues or errors on your website. Now that's a really handy function. Now, I'm sure Emma will uh, share you the link for Google Search Console. Now, if there are errors in your website, you're gonna get an email through from Search Console telling you that you are, because it's found some difficulties. And again, that could stand in your way of ranking highly on Google, for example. So a really useful tool. Again, no cost to link your website up to Search Console. Now we want Google to find our content. We are gonna be focusing on the Google search engine today. It does have the largest part of the market share. It's the most popular way to search by a long, long way, if you look that up too. So Google needs to find your content. Google needs to understand your content. It needs to understand what you're doing, what you're about and how your website is put together. There are a lot of different factors which affect where you do rank. Um, some of them, you know, a bit like a secret recipe. We don't really know what they are, but there are some fairly obvious ones of things that can actually help us to rank higher and higher as our efforts grow over time. So we can submit a site map um, and we can share lots of new content, keeping ourselves really relevant and keeping ourselves nicely up to date. 
Now we want Google to understand our content. So we're gonna create unique, accurate page titles, again, relevant to the thing that we're trying to demonstrate or perhaps to our business, the things that we're offering. We're gonna create good titles and snippets, good descriptions, snippets of little descriptions that really quickly summarize what we're offering. Perhaps so there might be some offers there, there might be some deals, or there could be just an overview of, we do this. And we can use heading tags to emphasize important text. All of these things help the search engine algorithm to understand our site better, to relate to our site better, and to help it us over time become found by more and more users by matching up to those relevant queries and those relevant searches. There's a lot more to this topic, as I'm sure you're probably aware. Um, and we, it would take so many hours, it would be um, almost unbelievable in order to cover all of these things. So you do need to look and to work on search engine optimization and find websites which are gonna help you to understand more and more. But again, maybe that fundamentals of digital marketing is a good starting place for you to be able to um, get underneath the bonnet of search engine optimization. Tips for success here are running keyword research. We want to know what words or phrases people are looking for. We want to publish useful, high quality content, useful, high quality content, really, really important. Or we want to optimize our on page um, elements. We want to change our website's individual pages. Then we want to make our web pages search friendly. You know, we want to make sure that everything is relevant, you know, that our site is well named and that essentially we're giving our users a good user experience. That's why there are so many UX design, UX type courses around now. It's the user experience is key. We need to make up um, for, well, we need to make our users experience as easy and um, help them to find their solutions really, really quickly by moving them around and having a great site and calls to action to those CTAs. Now, customers are also searching for local businesses, as I mentioned before, and there are a number of tools that we can use that we can see on screen. Now, there is a tool called Google My Business or now Google Business Profile, where you can create a free business listing that can come up in search. That could be seen as a local SEO, so search engine optimization, giving you another channel to be found on. You've got Bing, um, you've got TripAdvisor, you've got Yell, which is the online version of that huge yellow book that some of you might remember used to turn up in the post. That was absolutely massive with all of the local businesses. Of course, these things have all been now pretty much replaced with your online equivalents, again, for ease of use and ease of finding. Now, as I've mentioned, it's really important to show people that you're active. So if you've got a Google business profile, which is what you can see on the screen there, Rachel's Kitchen, you have the ability to update your business info to keep your customers informed, to be able to include all of your key info, like your opening times, um, your phone number, your address, you know, your presence on maps to help people find you really, really quickly. That's really, really useful to make sure people can get right to your door or to understand where you are. You don't need to be a physical business, by the way, to get a Google business profile. You can um, extend your presence out into an area if you don't want people turning up at your door. So lots of good functionality there. You also have the ability to show um, and add for people to add reviews and for you to show how good you actually are. You can see Rachel's Kitchen has got an average of 4.5 out of five for her star reviews, shows she's a good business, um, and she's had 17 reviews to date. So always encourage your um, audience and your visitors, your customers to leave your review, let them know, let them know the importance for you. Did you have a good time? Let us know what we can do, let us know what we can do to improve, let us know the things that you enjoyed the most. Always great questions for your customers and always respond to your reviews. So on that basis, if you've had some good reviews, then say thanks very much. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And if you've had some bad reviews, if something's gone wrong, sometimes things unfortunately do go wrong, respond and let your customers know how you're gonna fix that, how you're gonna deal with that, um, and how you're gonna turn their um, potentially negative experience into a very positive one. People do understand that things go wrong. It's more about how you deal with it. Okay, so search engine optimization here, SEO versus search engine marketing. What 
are the differences. Let's have a look at those on the next page. So SEO, we've got search engine optimization. Your listings are free. Um, basically, you come up because you're working hard. You're working hard to optimize your pages. You're linking up to uh, Search Console, as we mentioned before. And we are working really hard to make sure our site is really relevant to our customers and our customer search queries through that keyword research. So you optimize your keywords by understanding what words are going to be used to find a business or a service like yours. One of the things to really note there, it can take time to rank on the first page of Google, it can take a while, um, depending on how much work you put in. But again, you need to have traffic flows, you need to be able to analyze your results, you need to be able, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, that's for sure. Now with SEM, search engine marketing, you're going to pay for your search listings. They're the ones that get you to the top of uh, Google. They're the ones that you see with the little ad next to them that says very clearly they're an ad that shows that um, the people that are there have paid um, for the privilege of being on the top page, on the first page. You've been on the keywords, um, very varying levels of prices depending on the popularity of those keywords. And of course, the businesses that want, that are, you know, actively in competition with each other. So those prices can vary very, very strongly vary. And you then get onto the first page straight away. So there are some advantages and with uh, SEM, search engine marketing, it's a good idea to think about, especially if you have seasonal elements to your business, to really strongly perhaps promote them um, to fit in with all of those extra people that might be looking for you at a particular time of the year because your service is popular at that time of the year. So how do we get started with search engine marketing? We can create a campaign in Google Ads. We'll click, uh, create a search campaign and do a campaign goal. Always got to have a goal. Work with your keywords. You know, align your keywords with your business goals. Make sure that everything's relevant, everything's fitting in. You know, what would you be searching for if you were looking for a product or a business or a service like yours? Um, refine with negative keywords. That helps you to block out keywords that might not be applicable to your business and thus is saving you money by doing so, by making sure they're not coming up in people's searches. But then write a compelling ad and some keywords on the description on the right there, which is focus on user benefits. That's so, so important. Um, you want to produce copy or ads that appeal across devices. So they look good on your mobile, they look good on your tablet, they look good on your desktop and your laptop. Focus on your headlines, um, imagery, good pictures. You know, if, if you're in a scrolling situation, good imagery can often make people stop in their tracks and think, I'd like to know more about that business. And then implement all of your ad extensions if you're doing your search engine marketing, things that make you stand out more, things that give more information through to your customers to help make that important decision. So tips of success for search engine marketing, optimize your keyword list. You know, it's so, so important. A good keyword list can take you a long, long way. Um, there are tools online that can help you with keywords. You've also got the Google Ads Keyword Planner. You don't need to actually have an active campaign running to use Keyword Planner. So I'm sure Emma won't mind just sharing that uh, link for you as well. Now you can boost your ads with extensions. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with ad extensions. I've just described them a little bit on the previous slide, but please feel free again to drop us into chat if you've had any experience with ad extensions. You can improve your click-through rate or your CTR as it's known by implementing ad extensions into your ads. They make your ads stand out more essentially. They can give further context to your offering, to your value proposition. They help your customers to make a uh, better perhaps, or more informed decision. The um, ad extensions are free to use and they can make your ads cheaper in the long run. So check out and look at Google Ads and understand the functionality, the amazing functionality actually that they have. And then collect your analytics account. Do that, link it up to your website. You can't get this such crucial data through unless you've linked your website to an analytics account. Um, it will show the user journey that has been taken 
for your customers through your website. So, so important to see what's happening, the pages people are landing on, the uh, pages people are engaging with. Again, and all the demographics, all the geographic information, the location information, there's so much there. We do have a webinar uh, on the Google Digital Garage site, so that's g.co forward slash digital garage, called Getting Started with Analytics, which will help you to understand a lot better the functionality of Google Analytics. Again, Emma, if you wouldn't mind linking that, that would be really, really useful. A great hour webinar to get you understanding the fundamentals of analytics and how they can benefit you and your decision making. Now we're on to display marketing now. So let's have a look at what are display ads. Um, there's some uh, examples, some demonstrations of some display ads on the right hand side. You can see a couple highlighted in yellow. You've got some at the top, um, you've got some along the side and down. You know, it's advertising. It's like the, the they're called kind of the billboards of the internet essentially. They come in all shapes and sizes. They can be image ads, they can be text ads, they can be video ads, um, they can be mobile ads across mobile websites. Images can be quite effective in getting people to click. That's one of the advantages of using display. So when we get into display advertising, we're going back into the same interface for Google Ads. We're going to have a display campaign type for this one. So we had search campaigns before, now we're going to go into display and we're going to select another goal. Again, remember, if you haven't got a goal, how can you measure what you've done? How can you measure whether you're achieving what you want to or not? Now, we want to choose the right targeting. We can use um, much of the functionality. We can target by keyword. We can target by demographics. So um, again, maybe gender or age, number of things that fall into demographic targeting. Uh, we can look at topic targeting, interests. You know, there is so much information that we leave online via our profiles that really help us to find the right people, the right customers that we're looking for. Create ad creative means do a good ad, essentially. We want the right language. We want to be speaking to our customers in the right way with a good tone of voice from either our social accounts um, or here with display advertising, with the words that we're using actually on that display advert. We want catchy copy. We want to catch people's attention. You know, people's attention spans are pretty poor um, and you need to catch their attention pretty quickly. Eight seconds, I think, in general life, three seconds when it's coming to social media. So you need to catch people's attention quickly before they move on to something else. We want clean and simple imagery. We want to have a good image. That's going to be so important for a display type advert, clearly. Um, and then we want a compelling call to action. That could be click here, buy now. Uh, learn more, call us. There are so many calls to action. A call to action is really helping people to take the next step. That is getting people to do the thing that perhaps they want to do. So when you're on a particular page, what and with a display, what do you want them to do? You want to click through, you want them to buy now, you want them to see more, you want them to go through to your website. Whatever you want to do, you have the ability to direct people via your call to action. So the tips of success. Very, very important, and again, no coincidence that it's the first on the page, is understand your customers. You do need to understand your customers. Now, advertisers can choose whether they want to bid on a cost per click basis or for every thousand impressions served. That's really, really important too. There are different ways for you to be charged within um, your paid display advertising um, um, exploits uh, as you go. You want to understand your customers. That's really, really important so that you're targeting, you're on the right sites, you know the sites that your customers are likely to be on, and there you are with your advert on that site. And you do get suggested options to help you to work that out. You enhance with remarketing. You can target people that have visited your website previously. Um, you can create specific ads or multiple versions of the same ad with different wording to see which ads are really working well for you. And then that falls very much into the test and optimize. It's something that you may well not get right entirely the first time. That's where the experimentation comes in. That's why it's good to not get too disappointed if things don't work astoundingly well the first time, because 
understanding people, which is understanding your customers, you know, it's not always the easiest thing to do. And you have to get into the mindset of your customers, perhaps think if you were your own customer, what would you be doing, what you'd be looking for, but give yourself an opportunity to succeed. That's really, really important. Don't get disheartened immediately. Um, keep working. It's called an iterative process. You're going to need to do it more than once. Okay, so there was a whistle stop tour of display advertising. Now we're going to be looking at social media marketing. This is a huge, hugely growing area and um, very, very popular. Again, let us know in the chat if you have been involved in social media marketing. It's where a lot of people spend their time online, social media. I'm sure some of us spend a fair amount of time on our social media accounts. So therefore, probably so do our customers. Now, Social media marketing is a great way for businesses to communicate with their audience. Um, and again, it's a, it's part of your research to understand where your customers actually are. So social media can help you grow your business in a few ways. And again, if you've got any additions to these, pop them in the chat for us, we'd love to know. But specifically, social media can help you to generate more sales. You know, in terms of the UK, there's 85% of the 85% of the UK population on some social media platform. So it's a great place to connect with new customers. So you've got new business opportunities there. You've got the ability to really target demographics. You can build those relationships. As we saw right at the beginning of this module, that customer service element, when you're on social media, you are your own um, customer support representative really and you have to be available in some respects and you have to be able to answer the questions that come in so social media can also add value to your brand because of those customer service levels we were talking about you can have two-way conversations that's an important thing too. open a dialogue you know social it's social have a good discussion with your customers, learn new things, learn how you can improve for them. You can show a new side to your business. It doesn't always have to be about selling. It can be behind the scenes. You can show what things are going on. You could show your story, how you came about, how you had the passion for the particular type of business you're in. So you can really start to humanize your business too. And also social media will help you to improve your marketing because it will help you to get noticed on search. It's going to attract more people through to your site because they've got more places they can find you to click through and to be driven through to your website. You can gain some really important customer insights. We saw um, earlier on in terms of insights, we saw those Google Analytics and then those Facebook Analytics, Facebook Insights as well. That helps us to understand our customers better, which we saw from the previous slide is so, so important. And also, as I've mentioned, from a marketing perspective, keep an eye on competitors. Don't underestimate the value of keeping an eye on a competitor to see what they're doing, to see what they're doing well, to see on things that you think, crikey, that could be quite useful for me as well um, to perhaps do, but also to help you to keep up to date. So maybe follow your competitors on their platforms too. So social media has a lot of advantages. It, again, opens up many, many opportunities for you. So there are two types, and this is really important too. You've got organic social media, and then you've got paid social media. What's the difference? Um, what's the advantages or disadvantages of both? I'm going to ask you in chat to pop anything in that you think is an advantage or a disadvantage of either of those. I mean, from an organic perspective, it is free. But you have to realize that organically, social media is quite restricted. So you may not be reaching those that broad range of customers and people and networks that you want to. That's where the paid social media comes in because you're going to be paying for views, actions and clicks. But the functionality and the options that are there when you pay for your social media advertising are huge. Your ability to target, target areas, target locations, down to postcodes, areas, whole countries, the whole world. You get so much opportunity to really really target your audience by using the paid option and as it says there you can reach anyone so people do not 
have to follow you in order for you to be found. Um, if you think about all of the information that you put into social media, into your social media accounts, nothing really comes for free because that information is, of course, used for marketing purposes. And that will help the companies, the websites, the platforms that you're using to match people's queries, again, with your information based on what you've put in. So you have to think about um, really populating your information as richly as possible to reach the, as many people as you possibly can. So here's a really good slide. This is really good. I think take some notes on this one. Um, we'll come back to this later too. Um, how to get started with social media marketing. So on that basis, we want to identify our target audience. We can go on demographics, as we've mentioned a few times, location, their profession on some platforms, their interests and their behavior. What do they do? When do they do it? What social media do they use? When are they usually online? What are they into? What are they like? You know, people share a lot of information on social media. You've got some very popular channels there, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. What are your channels of choice? Let us know, love to know if there's any difference in there. I think I'd be adding TikTok onto there now as well. And posting your engaging content regularly. You want good photos, those same good photos we were talking about before. We want some videos. People love interacting with video. People love to learn by video. We want some blog articles to keep people informed and educated. We want some infographics, a really popular way for people to work their way through a process. And live broadcasts, just like this one. You know, live broadcasts are so, so popular. If you're happy to put yourself in front of the camera, then why not consider live broadcasts? Do people walking around with their smartphones doing live broadcasts, doing demonstrations? It's quick material. And when you think about um, the abilities on things like Instagram and Facebook, all of the platforms really now are giving you some type of video interaction where you can record small, short or small videos that you can upload immediately. People are interacting with those greatly. And in some cases on some platforms, people are interacting with the video content, the reels, the stories, more than they are the actual posts. So understand your audience, understand what it is that they like and how they like to learn. Now, the tips for success for social media marketing, we do need to set ourselves a goal. We always need to set ourselves a goal. It's important so that we can monitor it and look at it later. We want to understand our audience. It's so crucial because we need to speak specifically to our audience and make sure that we are on um, key with them. And then we want consistent and regular updates to show we're active to help us build that credibility. OK, the next area we're going to be looking at is email marketing. So again, a really popular way for people to understand what product choices are and how businesses are actually working. You want to stay top of mind with your customers. Email marketing is a great addition to other digital marketing activities. It can start to build loyalty and engagement because people are actually opting in and asking for your email marketing. Um, and it works well on mobile as well. So what is email marketing? It's permission based, it's probably important. So again, that VIP element to your customers, you know, people need to opt into your newsletter. You need to explain to them why they're receiving it. And then it gives you a great opportunity to communicate on a large scale. Um, you can, people care, people care, people, you know, if you think about it, the amount of emails that we potentially get through, you're actually asking for another one. That means you're starting to engage with that business. You've, ex, you know, you've expend, extended an invitation, people have accepted and people are now waiting for your information. So in order to get started, you can use some platforms. There's some great free platforms like MailChimp and some more advanced platforms. As you can see, ActiveCampaign, SendGrid uh, Grid and Drip. Um, check those out. Always good to start simply, I think, um, and start on a free platform. See if it's the right channel, the right way for you to communicate. Build a, a list of contacts. Use your content to generate new contacts as well. Invite people to subscribe. Segment the group. So could, that could be males, females. That could be age ranges. You know, you're 16 to 25s, you're 26 to 35s. Every group you're going to need to talk to slightly differently as you would do in real life. And you can start to really sort of target communications towards particular groups of people. Create that relevant and useful content. Personalize your emails. Um, dear Glenn is much better than dear customer. Make sure that you're appealing to people's sensibilities. People want to feel special. So make them feel special via your communications. 
So some tips for success, as we've mentioned, segment the group and the list for relevant content. Keep it simple and test it. You must test. Send it to devices like your tablets and your mobiles. Make sure it looks good. Make sure it's readable. Make sure that everything is looking and working as you'd like it to. And then measure the open rate and the click rate to optimize campaigns. So all of the emails you send out, how many people are actually opening them, how many people are viewing them and going forward and looking at your website as a result of getting your emails. That again is gonna help you to really tailor your campaigns. Okay, we're gonna move into content marketing now. The essence of content as a marketing strategy is the belief that if brands can deliver consistent ongoing valuable information to buyers, that those buyers are going to reward us with their loyalty. You know, it's a good concept. There are lots of ways we can do that, and we've covered quite a few of them when we've talked about the type of things we're going to be posting. So videos and blogs, case studies and guides. We want people to feel comfortable. We really want people to feel strongly aligned to the content that you are posting and to be informed, to be educated by it, and to be perhaps even just ent um, entertained by it. You know, uh, that whole thing of videos, people love the video content. So strongly consider if that would work for your business. Case studies are really good to help you with people's previous experience. Guides, how to get the most out of the products that you're using, the services that you're offering, how to make sure that people can really get value for money. All of these things really help your audience to engage with you and want more. So with content marketing, build your example customer profiles. These are called personas. Again, a big thing to do. Really, really important to understand who you're talking to. Build a persona, understand who you're talking to, what they look like, where they're from, their location, when they're online, their interests, so that you can appeal to them directly. Um, and create different profiles for each segment. So again, maybe that is the age range, the 16 to 25, the 26 to 35, the 35 to 44, whatever it might be. Think about the audience, their sensibilities and how you can best talk to them. Think about the customer journey map. We talked about user experience. So let's have a customer journey. We want people working through as quickly because people want to work through quickly and as conveniently as possible. So have a look at that, the least clicks probably is the best way for people to get to where they're getting to really, really quickly without having to think too much about it. And then use your content, facilitate the customer journey with great content, guiding them, directing them, and informing them at every stage. Distribute the content on the right channels. So we've looked at some of those today, the content marketing, um, your social media marketing, your display advertising, and include that call to action, that thing that you'd like them to do next, the thing that they'd like to do next as well. So some tips for success, use content to facilitate the sales process, keeping people entertained, informed, visually engaged. Again, maybe videos are gonna help you to do that. Storytelling, let people understand you, your business, what you're about, that humanizing element, um, perhaps the story of your products, the story of how you came to be as successful as you are and what drove you to get there. Distribute the content to maximize reach, get it out there, use it across all of your channels then measure performance and optimize. So again, that's the, how's that going? What made that campaign work well? What made that campaign more successful than the last campaign? That's how you can refine your content, learn, 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 and grow. So measure your performance and optimize. Okay, we're moving into the second pause for questions. For email marketing, we've got a question coming from Louise Norbury. Thank you, Louise, and good morning to you. I think it was morning or afternoon then. It's definitely still morning. Uh, for email marketing, what's a successful click? Well, I'd say that and maybe, and maybe that's part of your call to action is people opening the email, I would say, is a successful click in the first place. I, I do get the odd newsletter through that I'd ignore every now and again. So a successful click is perhaps that just being opened in the first place. That'd be good. Um, but then maybe taking an action as a result of clicking through and reading the information that you're sharing on your newsletter. It could well be visit our website, have a look at our social page, watch our video, look how to get the most out of this product. Getting people to do something more, I would say, would be a successful click. So um, create your content well, you will then get a successful click because it will be helping your audience to fulfill the reason they visited you in the first place.
So I hope that answers your question, Louise, and thank you so much for that. That's really, really appreciated. So we're going to move in now to the third section. This is where all of the information we've just been working through for the last sort of 45, 46 minutes or so, we're going to bring it and put it together into a digital marketing plan. So again, pen and paper at the ready. This is how to build a digital marketing plan and a simple digital marketing plan. It doesn't have to be complicated. So take a note of these steps. We've got business goals and objectives. We need to know what we want to achieve and why. We have to understand also, number two, our budget and resources, what we can actually achieve, what we're capable of. Three, we need to fit our audience into all of this and what do they want, what are they looking for. Four, we're going to look at what channels it is that we want to be working on, choose our channels carefully. Then we want to plan our activity, what we're going to be doing for the next month, three months, six months, year. And then at the end, when we've run our campaigns via any of the channels we were talking about before, the social media marketing, display advertising, content marketing, we're going to be measuring. Um, and it's got there in brackets smart. That's specific, measurable, assignable, realistic and time related. So we're going to be measuring our output to see how successful ultimately it has been. So let's work through an example of this to make it clearer. So firstly, we want to be looking at our business goals and objectives. So our case study, our case study for this session is Max, who's a hairdresser. Now they've established some business goals. They want to get more customers through the door a good business objective, um, new and past. So they want repeat custom from the people that they've served previously, but they need new people too. And they want to make more people in the area know that their business exists. So hopefully that's the, you're thinking back now to some of the things we come and thinking there are ways you can do that. And there are some quite simple ways actually that we can achieve that. Now let's have a look at some examples of some online objectives based on uh, what would help Max move through. So we want to increase traffic to the website. So that's an online objective. There we are setting our goals. I want to increase traffic to my website by perhaps using my social media channel as well. I want to increase online sales. So as a result of all my efforts, I want more sales. I want to increase social media page likes and follows from my customers. I want that interaction. I want that loyalty. I want that engagement from my customers, please. Um, and I'd like to increase online reach. So how far out and how many people we're getting to and awareness. I want more and more people awareness to know about my business. So what we want to do, and again, a good way, a good comparison on this screen, again, great for notice this one, is our business goals need to align with our online objectives. So as we saw from Max's objectives, to have more people aware that that business exists, we can increase our online reach and awareness. If we want to sell more products, that just translates into increased website sales. Get found by more people is increasing social media page likes and follows get more returning customers, increase traffic to website. So you can see how business goals can translate quite easily into online objectives. It's the same thing, just a slightly different language. Okay, so when we move on to step two of our plan now, which is our budget and resource, what's possible? Okay, so again, looking at what we've got, what we can do, and perhaps depending on our um, stage of evolution, business evolution, or the fact we haven't got much money at this point. I don't have a website yet. It's too much of an investment right now. Okay, fine. So we need to think about that and we need to think about ways that we can find to still get us online, even if we can't afford a website. So we'll hold that one for a moment. Then audience. Now they've done some, Max has done some excellent audience research and has established that the key ideal audience for Max and Max's business are going to be females in the local area. When you think about hairdressers, again, there are a lot of hairdressers around, so you're still getting people, people are only going to travel so far for that type of business or for any local business that's got a lot of competition. So the most valuable customers to Max are females above 30 years old because perhaps they're the ones that are coming through the door right now. They normally have children and work part time. Most of them use Facebook. So we've identified a platform there as well. So in terms of the marketing channels now, so we're starting to build a picture here. We're starting to build our 
digital plan when we look at the marketing channels if we want to think about what we're going to use if we want to increase our reach and awareness then we could use display social media or content marketing if our online objective is to increase sales we might want to be thinking about sem so search engine marketing seo optimizing our website and our website presence and email marketing so you can see that there's some crossover on each of those i'll give you a couple of seconds just to take a few notes on those um, if you want to increase customer loyalty, social media, why? Because you get that interactive element. You can talk to people, you can engage, you can do that customer service thing. Um, email marketing as well for customer loyalty. People want your emails, people are opening them, people have opted in to receive them. Content marketing, good, relevant content, helping people make good decisions. So you can see if you want traffic, SEM, SEO or email. So there are some crossovers across many of the channels that are available, help to help yourself to think about what your audience might prefer or what combination of channels they might prefer. Plan your activity. So they don't have um, the ability to invest in a website. So how can they use digital? They still can use digital. Get that Google My Business or that Google Business Profile, as it's now known, and create a free website. So you've got another way to be found. Set up a Facebook page, collect reviews, and post pictures of customer hairstyles. Great way for Max to get out there and for people to see how good they are at um, haircutting, hairdressing, styling, styling, all those things. Use Facebook advertising to target people in a local area. And maybe there's an offer, so maybe 10% on your first visit or a free cut after having had six or seven cuts. You know, a bit like the coffee um, incentives that you get from a lot of the big coffee chains. Now, so we've started to really set some good goals there. Once we've run those campaigns, once we've set those offers, once we've been on Facebook or Google Business Profile, we start to collect those reviews. How do we know if we've actually succeeded in our digital marketing plan and strategy? So if we did have our smart objectives, then that could be now broadly we'd like to increase our online sales but we need to be more specific than that so we want to increase online sales by 20 percent within three months that's measurable increase online sales by how much in what time scale that's how smart objectives work if we want brand awareness uh, increase our brand awareness on facebook by growing our audience with new people not existing customers by 40%. So we want 40% new customers coming through, commenting, liking, following, sharing. So here we go. Based on the overview that Max has given us, online objectives to reach more people in the local area and get more returning customers. This is how their plan could look. It's brilliant. It's simple. It's all on one page. It gets it all out of your head and it makes it very easily referenceable business goal, reach more people, channel. Okay, we're gonna be using local SEO, so your Google business profile, because we can't afford a website, but we'll get a free website with our Google business profile for of very basic information made up by the information we put into our profile. And we're gonna be using Facebook. Our objective is to increase our reach and increase returning customers, fantastic. We're gonna be um, really looking at females, 39 to 45 local area and their past customers. We're going to build a website and boost our visibility uh, based on the Google business profile. We're going to use Facebook advertising. So our smart objective, we want to increase our page likes um, by 50% within the next month. A great smart objective. Increase bookings from past customers. So keep our, our past customers nice and loyal by 20% in the next quarter, giving them maybe that incentive to do so, that 10%, that 20% or whatever you feel is relevant to your business off to help keep them coming back, coming back. So that's a great example of a digital marketing plan. Take some notes on that, again, revisit. This webinar will remain live for the next 24 hours. So there we are, we're back. We've seen our business goals uh, and objectives, our budget and resources, our audience, what channels they're on, our activity and measuring. Those are the key ingredients to a successful digital marketing plan. Phew, a lot of information there. Let's have a quick pause for question. Um, Louise Norbury, hello, Louise again. Would you recommend Facebook ads over Google ads if you know a lot of your clients use Facebook? Yeah, I think I, I probably would. Um, just simply because if you know that's where your clients um, actually are, fantastic. Use where they are. You do not need to be on all of these channels if or not if your customers aren't going to be on all of these channels too. Same with social media. There's no point being on nine platforms if your customers are only on three. 
you know, you might have a presence, but if you're not populating it, it's so much effort, you might devalue your overall offering just by being on too many channels. So choose wisely, choose carefully and work your way up rather than having to work your way back. Again, credibility wise, that could do you a lot of favors. So I hope this has been a useful session. What are your next steps? Maybe revisit this webinar. Maybe re, um, think about taking the fundamentals of digital marketing on the Google Digital Garage website. That's g.co forward slash digital garage. Also, sign up for our mentoring. If you're a small business or charity in the UK, sign up for our mentoring at g.co forward slash UK mentoring and explore some of the points we've covered today in more detail specifically for you and your business. It's a really great thing. Myself and Emma are both involved in this program, the mentoring program. Some great output, some great results have come as a result of getting involved. You've got nothing to lose. It's a totally no cost offering. So why not see what it can do for you? It could change your 2022. Okay, crikey. So what that leads us me now to say is thank you so much. Um, I really thank you for your interaction in the session throughout, for the questions that you've offered us as well. And I hope that my answers have helped move you forward. Um, as part of our customer service offering, we really love your feedback. That's, um, as you can see on the screen there, uh, goo.gul forward slash digital garage feedback. And Emma will share you the link for that in the chat as well. If you're on social media, you've learned something useful, why not share it and add in a hashtag digital garage. That'll then go in with all of the other useful comments that have come through as a result of digital garage sessions. It's been great fun delivering this session. There's so much to cover, um, but I hope you've managed to pull some areas that have made your ears um, stick up and think, yeah, that's going to be for me. That's going to help me grow. That's going to help me to grow my business. So book up for more webinars, come back again. Love to see you again on another Google Digital Garage um, webinar session soon. And um, I, last thing I can do really is ask you to have a fantastic day. Enjoy, think about the tips that we've had today and then have a successful week and take yourself forward, set yourself a goal. Let us know also in the chat if you want to, something that you're gonna do as a result of this session. So thanks very much indeed. And I will see you all again soon on another Google Digital Gary session. Thanks a lot and goodbye. Thank you.